My next guest is an Emmy award-winning sports broadcaster who's just come out with a book based on his popular Today Show feature called Spanning the World. Please welcome Len Berman. Now, Len, uh, let's compare jobs for just a moment. Yeah. Uh, I get to interview uh, people here in this beautiful, uh, open-windowed uh, penthouse apartment. <laughs> just play along. And, uh, but you, I'm, I don't know if this is a tough part of your job or not, but as a, as a sports broadcaster, you have to go into the locker room, right. which never seems like that would be a fun place well, to well, hang people, out. No, people do think it's a glamorous place. People like it, really. Yeah, people think it's terrific. I personally don't like it at all. I mean, you have the, you know, showers going, you're hair frizzes, you got right. a million reporters jostling for interviews, the guys are walking around naked, you don't know where to look first. And uh, Actually, you should know where to look first. Yeah. <laughs> if you're you know, confused, we can talk about that. One yeah. person who did like going in the locker room once was my seven-year-old son. I, I took him to a Georgetown basketball game, right. and the Hoyas were, at the time, Patrick Ewing was playing for Georgetown, right, this right. goes back a few years, took him in the locker room, he walks out of the locker room, his eyes are big as anything, he says, Daddy, they have penises the size of fire hoses. <laughs> I want to publicly... At this, at so this, how's your uh, son doing these days? I just, <laughs> just want to publicly thank Patrick Ewing for knocking me down another notch <laughs> in the eyes of my son. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Uh, now, you are a uh, lifelong Yankee fan. Uh, well, who's, I, I grew up a Yankee fan. You grew up a Yankee yeah, fan. Yeah, but I think it's tough when you're on the air now, mostly in New York. You have to be... Yeah, you have you, to be a journalist. Be a journalist, right. Uh, who's your uh, fav favorite player? And I'm going back to the classic days of the Yankees. Do you have a favorite? Well, so many great... I had no originality, so Mickey Mantle was Mickey my Mantle. Guy, you know, growing up. And, yeah. uh, and, I, and the big thrill was getting to meet him. Mm -hmm. And he was always very nice to me. But a, a friend of mine is a collector of memorabilia. And he pulled out this sheet of paper once, which just floored me. They asked all the old-time Yankees. It was the 50th anniversary of Yankee Stadium, and they asked all the Yankees to choose their most memorable Yankee Stadium moment. So I thought, well, maybe it was the ball Mickey almost hit out of the ball. You know, no one's ever hit a fair ball out of Yankee Stadium. And, right. and I, Mickey almost did. I thought that would be the moment he wrote down. No, right. it wasn't. I thought it was a catch in the World Series during Don Larson's perfect game. You know, write down. In intricate detail, he described his favorite Yankee Stadium moment and involved the young lady under the bleachers between games of a doubleheader, which I... <laughs> You're kidding, really? My, and he wrote... No, he wrote it very... I don't want to go into all the details. It was a very presidential moment, and he said at the end... Um, wow. He okay. said... He signed it, and he signed this affidavit, Mickey Mantle, the All-American Boy. Right. So right. How, how can you not have a hero like that? I mean, <laughs> no. Now, in this book, in this book of yours, you, you talk about changes you'd like to see in sports. Right. Give, it, give me examples, because sometimes people are afraid to change the rules at all because they think, no, this is the way it's always been, we can't change. What, what kind of changes do you want to well, see? I, I had a lot of changes for hockey, for example. Uh, that sport needs an overhaul. I, and basketball, just a minor thing. I think some of the colleges, their shorts look like dresses. I mean, you know, they need to go back to wearing real basketball shorts, I think is nice. Baseball, you That know, could be a problem with the fire hose penises, though. That would be... <laughs> that, they get too short, and then there's a dangling, and then you got to... Problem. No need for me to mime that. Uh, That's the origination of the long shot. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. I know you're a sports guy at heart. The other thing is, is that in baseball, there, a, there actually is a rule. I don't, a lot of people don't know that if there's nobody on base, the pitcher has to throw the next pitch within 20 seconds. Right. And, you know, it takes forever. I mean, they're looking for the sign, they scratch, they spit, they throw their rosin bag all over the place. Right, right. And I'd love to see it like a, a clock on a scoreboard, the way they do in a shot clock in basketball, and it would count down. Five, right. four, and the fans would chant, Thro throw the ball already. You know, right, I think right. that would be kind of It would cool. make the game more exciting. I, I have an idea for baseball, and I, I'm serious about this, but hear me shorts. out. No, no, it's nothing to do with the shorts. You seem obsessed with that area. Oh, well. We'll get away from it. <laughs> uh, I think that when you hit the ball in baseball, you should have a choice of which direction you run in. <laughs> think about it. You can either run to first, but once you pick a direction, that's the way. So there'd be a whole level. It'd be go from, from chess to three-dimensional chess, because you hit the ball, you start running to first. Well, that means you've got to continue in that direction. If you run up the third baseline, you've got to continue. You'd have players that, passing each other. That'd be, that Wouldn't would screw that be... up a lot of things, because, you know, most baseball players are right-handed gloves yeah. on the left hand, but now if they No, can they go wear two the gloves. This is another thing. <laughs> players are wearing two gloves. Great. Plus, we put little hazards out in the field. Things that you'd see on a mini golf course. Obstacle course yes. Field. Plus, have when a, someone's... Have a windmill at shortstop? Yes, yes. Cool. And when someone's tagged out at second, they burst into flame. I, I... That's a game I would watch. Yeah. I'm 
got ideas. I'm, I'm, I'm just annoyed I didn't think of that. <laughs> That's going to be in the paperback edition cool. under the Conan's Idiotic Ideas section. <laughs> Len Berman's Spanning the World uh, is in stores now. Len, thank you so thank much. You. Always great to have you on the show. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Well, that's our show. I do want to thank all my guests. Stay tuned for Last Call with Carson Daly. Bye, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs>